Starting a goal setting program can be difficult. Keeping it going? Now that's really asking something. We're going to use the illustration of building a fire as an example of how to start, and more importantly, keep a goal setting program going. By using the physical, tangible illustration of building a fire, we can see a process that otherwise goes unseen. Then we are in a better position to make it work, this time. So the first step in building this fire is gathering materials. There are some basic things that we will need in order to get the fire started and keep it going, just like with your goal setting program. You'll need some type of plan to follow and maybe some equipment to begin with. For our fire, we'll first need a spark. Matches in this case. Something has to get this process started, same with your goals. Something has to ignite the process, and we often refer to this as motivation. Next, you need some tinder. The tinder is basically some small twigs and dry materials, nothing larger than a pencil. The tinder is used to take the energy from the spark, the ignition source, and keep the action going. That spark may only last a second. If there isn't something ready to take its energy and move the process along, the fire will die. Sound familiar? The third item on a list of materials we'll need for building this fire is kindling. Kindling is just a fancy name for some sticks. Ideally, you'll want these sticks to range in size from your pinky to your thumb. These sticks feed off the energy of your tinder and really get the fire going. Finally, you need some logs. Pretty self-explanatory. A few smaller logs about the size of your wrist, all the way to much larger logs. Difficult to get started, but long burning. Now that you have all the materials you need, it's time to light this thing, literally. And that brings us to problem number one, getting started. Here is a critical point that so many miss when it comes to their goal setting process. Setting goals is not the goal. Achieving them is. Some people are professional researchers, list makers, and getting ready years. <laughs> Planners and dreamers. But if you don't actually light the flame and get to work on your goals, they aren't really goals. They're a wish. Big difference. Earl Nightingale talked about these people in 1956. He said, They stand by the stove, telling it, Give me some heat, and then I'll put the wood in. There are those who want the result. They want the feeling, but aren't willing to do anything to make it happen. Now this brings us to problem number two. Too much, too fast. This group has the opposite problem. They want to change it all overnight, attempting to light the log. They set a goal in the emotion of the moment and have unrealistic expectations of what they will do when the reality of the alarm clock rings in the morning. Step two, light the fire. Simply begin. We've got our materials, and we're actually going to light this thing. And just like that, we have fire. Real flames are coming off, and we celebrate. The thing we were after all along is now a reality. Fire. Heat. Yes. And then, problem number three. Start and think that's enough. The first sign of some real results and we stop. One or two trips to the gym and then... If those people who struggle with the first problem are professional getting readiers, then this group is the professional starters. Start, stop. Start, stop never really getting the true results that they were after. The tinder burns up and then nothing. Their fire is dead. But that's not you, right? So let's try it again. Relight. 
And this time we're serious about not just getting the flame lit, but building a fire. Which brings us to step number three. Keep adding and make adjustments. We have to keep doing, keep adding more sticks, taking more action to get this fire to critical mass where it can become self-sustaining. This is the most critical time in your fire and your goal. Its life is in the balance. You might need to fan the flame, get a little out of breath. Adjust to life's ever-changing conditions. Adapt. Get creative. Your fire and your goal are at stake here. Which brings us to problem number four. Let up too soon or fail to adapt. There is no exact formula to success. No set number of sticks for a set period of time. Just because it took someone else 12 sticks doesn't mean yours will be the same. It might take 14 or 20 or 10. You just have to keep working at it until the fire has caught. Life will happen. Conditions will change. You will need to adapt. And you've worked this hard. You're almost there. Just don't stop. The beginning is the hardest. You have to be willing to be bad at it long enough to get good at it. If you are, you will reach... Step number four. Step four. Time to add some logs. Your fire is now going strong, requiring much less effort. This was what you'd been waiting for all along. The point where you could just throw a log on and be done. If you make it through the difficult start, you'll reach the easier phase of adding logs. Congratulations, you did it. You built a fire. Your fire is now capable of sustaining itself as long as you don't make the final mistake. You completely stop. You've worked hard for this fire, real hard, and have some serious results arriving at a place few will experience. You set a goal, had a plan, gathered your materials, got started, worked hard, huffing and puffing to get it going, adding more to it and making adjustments along the way. But if you completely stop, your fire will die. And guess where that will leave you? Back at the very beginning. You have to start all over again. Obviously, this is true of your goal too, and it happens to the best of us. Trained for months and months to run a marathon, 26.2 miles, building a roaring fire along the way. And then when it's over, when the goal has been reached, stop. Stop adding on some logs to the hard work already done, so that now it's pretty much back to the beginning. Struggling through what should be an easy mile. Getting the fire started again is the hard part. Keeping it going Throwing on a log here and there, well, that's much easier. Just don't stop. Now let's talk for just a minute about trick shortcuts and magic pills. Sure, you can douse the log in gasoline or use any number of gimmicks to get the fire going. But how's that working for you? Lose the pounds while eating all the food you love. Sprinkle some magic fairy dust on your food like Sensa. Or take those magic pills that are so powerful, you may have to decrease use. Buy someone's special marketing system and make money while you sleep, all from the comfort of your living room. Go for it. Make other people rich by indulging in your desire for a shortcut. Again, how's that working out for you? Or cut through all that crap and just get busy on becoming a better you. Learn how to light your fire the right way, and you'll become the answer to your goals. Your life will get better because you do.
It is possible and it is that simple. You are your answer. Light the fire.